Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's on this Monday, the 8th day of March. Today we celebrate during our service the life of Jeffrey Kennedy, who served as a chaplain during World War I, and we'll learn more about him during the service. During Lent, we begin with a sentence from Scripture before we say the confession of sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will arise and go to my Father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. The confession of sin begins on page 41 of the Book of Common Prayer. Together let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the uh, <coughs> offertory uh, psalm. Together we will read together the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the his is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. I mistakenly called, in reading the Venite, I called it the Offertory Psalm. It's actually the Invitatory Psalm. It precedes the psalm that's assigned to us and that changes uh, each day. We are going to read a portion of Psalm 69, verses 15 through 20, that can be found on page 680 of the prayer book. In your great mercy, O God, Answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. We continue with the scripture assigned for today. Uh, we have a passage from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, beginning at the 25th verse. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The word of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue <coughs> with the... A biography of Jeffrey and Kettel Studert Kennedy. G.A. Studert Kennedy was born in Leeds in the year 1883, one of nine children. His father, William Studert Kennedy, was vicar in Leeds. Kennedy earned a degree in classics and divinity in the year 1904 at Trinity College, Dublin. After his ordination, he served parishes in Rugby and Worcester. At the outbreak of the First World War, Kennedy volunteered as a chaplain to soldiers on the Western Front. Along with the spiritual comfort he gave to the wounded and dying, he was famous for handing out Woodbine cigarettes to the soldiers, who called him Woodbine Willie. A skilled poet, Kennedy published several volumes of religious poetry, he also wrote poems based on his experience as war chaplain, published in the volumes Rough Rhymes of a Padre in the year 1918 and More Rough Rhymes, 1919. His courage and his compassion for the soldiers he served can be heard in his poem Woodbine Willie, a gracious, moving account of the men who gave him his nick nickname. The excerpt begins. They gave me this name like their nature, compacted of laughter and tears, a sweet that was born of the bitter, a joke that was torn from the years. Of their travail and torture, Christ fools, atoning my sins with their blood, who grinned in their agony sharing the glorious madness of God. Their name, let me hear it, the symbol, of unpaid, unpayable debt. For the men to whom I owed God's peace, I put off with a cigarette. He also published a collection of sermons entitled, I Believe, Sermons on the Apostles' Creed. His later poems and prose works express the Christian socialism and pacifism that he adopted during his war years. 
He eventually worked for the Industrial Christian Fellowship. One of his speaking tours on their behalf, he became ill and died in Liverpool in the year 1929. Studdard Kennedy remains a powerful influence in, on the pacifist cause, and his many writings have inspired figures such as Desmond Tutu and Jürgen Moltmann. And there you have the life of Mr. Uh, Father Kennedy. We continue our service by affirming our faith, reading together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. Let us begin with the Lord's Prayer, followed by Suffrages A. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. We continue with the colics. Glorious God, we give thanks not merely for high and holy things, but for the common things of earth which thou hast created. Wake us to love and work, that Jesus, the Lord of life, may set our hearts ablaze, and that we, like Jeffrey Studdard Kennedy, may recognize thee and thy people, and in thy creation, serving the holy and undivided Trinity, who liveth and reigneth throughout all ages of ages. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a moment to invite your prayers and thanksgivings. We give thanks for this new week. We uh, give thanks uh, that we have, in coming through an almost full year of the coronavirus, are seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. We give thanks for the people who have been inoculated already, for those who are receiving treatment. We pray that um, we may reach an end of this pandemic. We give thanks for all the people who have served so diligently, for first responders, uh, for the military, for doctors and nurses, uh, for all those who have made our life uh, bearable during this time. 
We pray for friends and family, especially those who have faced any illness or setbacks. We pray for our community. We pray for our parish and our school. We continue to pray for our state and nation and for the nations of the world. Take a moment to invite your prayers and thanksgiving. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our prayers by saying together the prayer of St. Christostom, which can be found on page 59. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining morning prayer this day. I give thanks for, to Carol Cow for doing the arrangement of the greens on the altar today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Tuesday. God bless.